it's time to head on down to Flavortown to see just how the internet's favorite food guy likes to spend his money. We'll go through Guy Fieri's big homes, big trucks, his mythical Flavortown yacht that shoots missiles, and even the secret origin of the legendary Frosted Tips. So how much does a guy like Guy Fieri make for having the single best job a human being could possibly have? Big bucks, apparently. Well, after years of building up an audience on the Food Network and an even bigger audience of online people who like to make memes about him, Fieri was able to negotiate a legendary deal that earned him millions. Guy signed a deal in 2018 with the Food Network that earned him a big-time payday. The entire three-year contract was for $30 million, giving him a yearly salary of $10 million. This, along with his many other business ventures and merchandising deals, has earned him a net worth of $50 million. To put that in perspective, Adam Richman, the star of Man vs. Food, is worth around $10 million. The two have very similar styles with one major difference. I think that this conclusively proves that the Frosted Tips are worth $40 million. I hate to disappoint you, but Guy Fieri doesn't actually live in a magical place called Flavortown where it rains barbecue sauce and the streets are paved with racks of ribs. While that would no doubt be his wildest dreams come true, the homes that he bought are pretty freaking great. The Fieri family's primary residence is in Santa Rosa, California. It's a 6,000 square foot home that he purchased in 1996. It has four bedrooms and three baths. Of course, it also features an incredible kitchen that's said to be around 1,000 square feet. For him, the kitchen is the heart of the home and he takes great pride in cooking for the entire family. According to the celebrity chef, the home was a real mess when he purchased it. He has spent the years since purchasing it, repainting and renovating the entire home into the scenic spot it is today. He likely purchased it for a steal in the 90s and has driven up its worth into the millions today. It looks like from the outside to inside, this is a home that's all about exposed wood and beautiful natural light. The property also has fenced-in areas where the family raises several types of farm animals. They seem to spend their time there enjoying family time, hosting charitable events, bringing over friends, and generally enjoying life. I am disappointed that Fieri doesn't have his own Flavor Town amusement park out back, but I guess being a wholesome family man is acceptable. Guy Fieri's favorite place in the world to visit is Florida. Literally no one is surprised by this revelation. He loves the culture, the food, and the constant news articles about men from Florida doing outrageous things. And of course the beach. It's been a running joke between him, his wife and their friends that they would one day buy a property there. After signing another massive contract with Food Network, Fieri finally made his Florida dreams come true. They purchased a lovely home in the West Palm Beach area. It is a waterfront home that looks like a dream for someone like Fieri. He's well known for his love of water sports, and this gorgeous estate comes complete with a dock right off the water. The home itself is beautiful too once Fieri gets back from a day on the water. It's a scenic, two-story home that is framed in gorgeous palm trees. It also has a spacious pool because literally every celebrity home is required to have one. What you're really paying for with a house like this is the neighborhood, and boy, is it a good one. Pierre can call the likes of Venus and Serena Williams, Jimmy Buffett, and Howard Stern neighbor. All of them have been known to buy property in the area, though not all of them have $4 million on their very own slice of waterfront paradise. That's exactly how much Fieri paid though. So wait, let me dust off my trusty flavor meter to see how much these homes really rate. It's the only scientific instrument that can properly judge this kind of thing. Unfortunately, while these homes are all kinds of lovely, they're not at all what I was expecting. I wanted homes that were just as ridiculous as his infamous personality. So these homes are only a five out of 10. Luckily, we still have his cars to judge. Guy Fieri has the exact car collection you'd expect them to have. They come in two distinct styles. That would be his yellow and black collection and his super classy collection. Every one of his cars in the first collection has the same yellow and black of his trademark haircut. So let's open up his garage and have a look. Starting out, we got the Chevy Chevelle. It's the perfect appetizer to show what kind of car Fieri is known to go for. He's all about loud, yellow and black cars with some serious muscle behind them. The Chevelle is no joke when it comes to muscle either. It's one of the most sought after muscle cars around. The top speed for the car is 113 miles an hour with a zero to 60 time of six seconds. You can still pick one of these up on the high side of around 60 grand. 
This is evidently a car that Fieri likes to drive around his neighborhood in. The Chevelle was the perfect car for cruising around Flavortown. Somehow, I just knew that Fieri would have a 2011 Chevrolet Camaro. It just seems like the car he was destined to drive. His Camaro looks like it just drove off of a Transformers movie set. Besides being able to turn into a giant robot that saves the world from Decepticons, the 2011 Camaro can hit speeds of around 165 miles per hour. It also has a 0 to 60 of around 5 seconds. These babies are certainly popular, and you still can usually find a good price for one. Knowing Fieri though, his is still probably on the high side of around $20,000. He could probably get even more for it since the car has appeared on his TV show. I'm not really sure what the increase in price is for a car once it's been on diners, drive-ins, and dives. I would think at least a few thousand though. Next, I want to talk about his 1976 Jeep CJ5. It's a perfectly fine car, but definitely not the nicest in his collection. They go for a sound $16,000 nowadays. With the top speed of 120 miles per hour and an acceleration of 11.6 seconds, it's a great off-road vehicle and one perfectly suitable for cruising around town. Mostly though, I want to talk about this picture of Guy with his Jeep. Everything from the shorts, to sandals, to the freaking flames on the side of the car are just peak Guy Fieri. This picture alone is a 10 out of 10 on the flavor meter. Absolutely no notes. So where do we put the yellow and black collection on the flavor meter? I'd say around an 8.5 out of 10. After a while, mustard colored cars kind of get old. Apparently, Fieri agrees because he has a collection of cars that don't match his haircut. You know, like a normal person. I feel like his 68 Pontiac Firebird is a great example of other kind of ride he likes to buy. If he isn't doing a black and yellow scheme, he usually has the same kind of muscle car in red instead. The Firebird is perfect for Fieri because it's a classic, but it still has that kick that he clearly likes. They can hit high speeds of 106 miles per hour. They've also got a 0 to 60 time of 5.1 seconds. Today, they can go for around $30,000. Next, we have a 1978 Datsun. Here we've got another beautiful red classic with an impressive high speed. I'm starting to see a trend here. The Datsun can hit top speeds of 127 miles per hour. The 0 to 60 we've got here is around 8 seconds. If they're in excellent condition, these can go for around 30 grand. Most of the time though, they're worth less than half of that. One of his favorites is clearly his 68 Camaro that he drove on diners, drive-ins, and dives. These famous classics have a top speed of 120 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 of 6.2 seconds. Cars like this can go for nearly 30,000 on the high end. I imagine that's what someone like Fieri would pay. Once again though, the main draw for this car is a pic of him driving it. Just look at him, in a car with cheerleaders who have pom-poms that match his car. He is living his best life. This is another 10 out of 10 on the flavor meter, that's for sure. Fieri changed things up a bit when he bought himself a 2004 Cadillac Escalade. While these are known for being comfortable rides, they don't have quite the speed. The Escalade can hit a top speed of 106 miles per hour, with a 0 to 60 of 8.4 seconds. They can go for like 5 grand today. Not as most impressive by far, especially compared with this next one. By far, his coolest car is a CSX Cobra. It is an amazing looking car that is in terrific condition. They aren't just beautiful to look at though, they are real speed demons on the road. Cobras have a top speed of 155 miles per hour with a 0 to 60 time of 4.1 seconds. These babies can still go for big prices of over a million dollars. So where do we rate his second collection on the flavor scale? Well, I'd put it around the same 8.5 as the last one, but the Cobra is enough to boost it up a point. So put this one down as a 9.5. Okay, we've seen the higher end of Fieri's garage, but what about the dark side? There's nothing like watching Guy Fieri eat something that's not great. Turns out, Fieri has plenty of cars that aren't exactly the high price steak of cars. First, we gotta look at his 1968 Ford Camper. It's certainly not a great car to look at, but like many other people out there, the 68 Camper was what Fieri learned to drive on. He even had a special deal worked out with his dad. Guy was allowed to drive his dad's camper, but only if he washed it. It ended up becoming his very first ride. It's likely that this is what started his love of muscle cars. That's because these cars are known for being sluggish and for turning about as well as a shopping cart on a rainy day. After driving one of these babies through his high school days, he probably dreamed of buying something fast and furious one day. While these cars can go on the low side for a couple of Gs, the sentimental value of your first car is truly priceless. 
While Fieri's first love is definitely the muscle car, he's still fond of driving around in a massive truck. The one that really shows off his truck taste is his 2004 GMC Sierra. It's a big and bold truck built for hauling, off-roading, and whatever other job he need it for. It's worth only a few grand with a conservative top speed of around 90 miles per hour. Still, this is a car that's less about showing off so much as it is about utility. That makes the few grand you drop on it well worth the price. When I said that Fieri really liked big trucks, I don't think you really understand just how much I meant that. I mean, just look at this massive Chevrolet Kodiak. This car is a beast. It's a huge piece of metal muscle, but it can only go up the speeds of around 85 miles per hour. And that's if you're going downhill. It weighs a solid 20,000 pounds and can haul 16,000 pounds. What gives this car extra points is the fact that it's another of his yellow cars in his garage. I'm just happy I found a picture of him living it up so happy to finally have a truck that was too big to fit in his garage. I don't think this one's a 10 out of 10, but it's at least an 8.5. His 1967 Chevy C10 is one car you will never see him ride around in. It's a perfectly nice truck that's worth around 10 grand today, but that's not really the problem. The problem is that he technically just owns the parts to a Chevy C10. They just happen to be scattered around his garage. So where do these cars fall in the flavor meter? Sorry guy, I know these cars likely have some sentimental value, but they don't compare with the rest of your garage. I'll give these cars a 2 out of 10 on the flavor meter, and that's because I'm being generous. So where does the myth of Guy Fieri end and the man truly begin? That's what we're here to find out. There's been a major rumor circulating on the internet that Guy Fieri lives on a giant boat that's called the Flavor Town. The rumor goes that it's a multi-million dollar yacht where he hosts big parties, fishes, and of course cooks amazing food right on the water. This rumor got real silly, with people claiming it could shoot missiles. So how much of this is true? Does Guy Fieri really own and operate a Flavor Town warship? Well, I'm sorry to say that this one is almost entirely false. The only thing that's even partially true is that there is a ship called the Flavor Town that was used in the special Guy Fieri's Feeding Frenzy for Shark Week. While it is cool that the ship technically exists, it's clearly not the kind of yacht that people were saying it was. Not only that, but I'm 99% sure that it doesn't actually shoot missiles. If this rumor was true, it would be a 5,000 out of 10 on the flavor meter. Unfortunately, it's a zero. Don't believe everything you read on the internet about celebrities, folks, unless it's Army Hammer. So how does a normal person become someone as ridiculous and wonderful as Guy Fieri? What is his superhero origin story? Well, Guy Fieri was originally known by the name Guy Ferry. During high school, he became a foreign exchange student in France, where he started developing his famous palate. Once he got to college, Guy opened his first food business. That would be the simple pretzel cart he operated called Awesome Pretzel. This little cart was the first step towards him earning those frosted tips of destiny. He ended up making a small change, going from Guy Ferry to Guy Fieri to honor his grandfather's original surname. Guy worked in the restaurant industry for years, managing, cooking, and doing pretty much everything in between. His life really took off in 2006 when he won the second season of the next Food Network star. Even looking at his audition tape, it's kind of ridiculous how fully formed his persona was all those years ago. He already had the tips, the rings, the big bowling shirt, and even his whole vibe he's known for. From there, it's been nothing but big hits and big misses, with restaurants, TV shows, cruise ships, and more all getting into the Flavor Town business. The hits come in form of TV shows like diners, drive-ins, and dives, while the misses come in the shape of the worst reviewed restaurant in New York City history. Seriously, no one in The Godfather got hurt quite as bad as Guy's American Kitchen and Bar. The review contained gems like, why is one of the few things on your menu that can be eaten without fear or regret called a roasted bon mi, when it resembles that item about as much as you resemble Emily Dickinson? Rough. I'm sure he cried about that review into a giant wad of hundreds, because it was one of the highest performing restaurants in Times Square for years. You can't take down Flavor Town, baby. The secret behind Guy Fieri's money, and both how he spends it and how he makes it, has very little to do with the Food Channel. That's just the marketing. Despite surviving brutal reviews and mockery, Fieri has built a vast restaurant empire that includes 14 brands and over 70 restaurants. The infamous Guy's Burger Joint is the most popular on both land and sea. 
There are burger joints in 25 states, and the franchise has become the mainstay of Carnival Cruises, where you can actually pick up Flavortown burgers for free. Many of the passengers even claim that this got them low-key addicted to them and craving a local chain. It's almost like that was by design. His brand has exploded into Mexican cuisine markets and barbecue places, with Guy Fieri's Taco Joint, Chicken Guy, Guy's Barbecue Joint, and more. Yeah, he may have peaked with his television career already, but it really seems as though his restaurant empire is only getting started. So yeah, you thought Guy Fieri was comfortable with taking Emerald's legacy. No, no. Guy is coming for you, Ronald McDonald. Now that is a fight I'd love to see. Of course, none of that big money has changed the thing about Guy that made him an icon in the first place. His love of food, not expensive French cuisine, or Kobe beef either. Fieri loves relatively cheap meals from hole-in-the-wall places, which is what inspired diners, drive-ins, and dives in the first place. Despite the fact that he's been all over the world and tried foods most people couldn't even imagine, he really does believe the best food still lies in those undiscovered gems off of highways all across America. Over the years, he's tried some of the best dive food the U.S. has to offer. While pretty much everything he's eaten on the show looks amazing, there are a few meals he considers to be the absolute best of the best. These include the Beacon Drive-In Chili Cheeseburger, which sells for $9.95, Sonny's Famous Steak Hoagies for $7.50, and the giant hot dog known as the home wrecker from Hillbilly Hot Dogs, which can go for $32 if you get the Widowmaker version. So there should be something comforting about how even if you're not worth over $20 million, you can still buy what a multi-millionaire would call the best food in the world, all for under 50 bucks. Most importantly though, what is the origin story of the spiky hair? Well, it turns out that his dramatic change was kind of an accident. Years ago, Fieri was known for having dark hair, wearing suits, and having a clean-shaven face. He had a bad day once several years ago and had a haircut with his stylist, Christina Jones. Frustrated, Fieri reportedly just told her, do whatever you want. I don't know if it was a joke or some sort of divine providence, but she decided to go as wild as possible. The next time he saw his wife and friends, he had gone full flavor town. Despite the fact that this wild hairstyle made him an international celebrity with millions of fans, apparently, he is constantly bothered by his family to change the style. He's refused every time. The look is his brand now. It's likely that he'll be the only 80-year-old with spiky blonde hair in his retirement home. Getting frosted tips done can cost from $80 to $200 if you're getting it done in a salon. That was probably the best $200 investment of his life. Food Network, I want you to know, while you spend tens of millions of dollars every year for Guy Fieri to go all over the country, I would get frosted tips and do it for free right now.